If you've been following along with my content recently, then you may be aware that I've been doing a little mini series and that includes four vinyls that are recently picked up from a charity shop. So we've done two so far and there's two left. And in today's particular video, I'm going to be using this vinyl. I hope you can see it without getting too much of a glare on it. Uh, this is the Avita soundtrack and it says the Sounds International Orchestra with singers and chorus excerpts from the opera. Evita. So really excited to try this one. I think there's going to be some good stuff on this one. Hopefully we can find some music without lyrics on the top. I think that is something which I'd quite like to go for today. And again, I'm going to use the SP404 Mark II. I think I'm just going to use this for the whole series now just because that's how I've started. It would have been good to use some other devices, but I can do that in other videos further down the line. So let's get this final on the turntable. I'm using the PTA1 Scratch and let's see what we can find. fly Okay, yeah, I've got some chops there. I actually ended up doing that individually uh, rather than doing one big thing and chopping it. This is probably going to sound a little bit similar to the last beat I did because I actually ended up finding a track, which was the last track on side two. I think this is kind of like an orchestral version of the main theme tune. So I've put these chops into a mute group and I'm just going to pitch these down just because of copyright issues. So let me just pitch this down to minus five and we can see what we've got here. I usually pitch my samples down anyway, as you probably know from watching these videos already. So there's no harm in me doing that basically. Okay, and I actually forgot in the last video to do envelopes. So I want to make sure these have got envelopes on it. And I'm just going to do an attack of two. This start point on one needs slightly editing. And we'll truncate that. That could probably do with slightly editing as well, actually. Okay, and let's get some drums. So I have actually been using my Hip Hop Drums Volume 1 quite a lot over the past couple of weeks and sort of layering those over the top of other drums that I own or other drums that I've created like Lo-Fi Drums Volume 5. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get some Hip Hop Drums in here. Hip Hop Drums Volume 1. And Snare 14 sounds really good and that's going on Pad 14. Funny coincidence there. Uh, Hi-hat. I'll choose hi-hat 5. These may change further down the line, but for now, these are going to work okay. And a kick. I like 12, so I'm going to put that on 13. And now what I'll do is quickly jump out and go to lo-fi drums volume 5, and I'm going to get a kick from this one. I really like 11. And I'm going to put that on pad 9, and probably what I'm going to end up doing is layering that over the top of pad 13, just so it sounds a bit more beefy, because this on its own... It's got that nice acoustic sound to it, but it hasn't got the punch that I want from a kick. So let's hear with them both at the same time. So that's going to really add some meat. So I'm going to resample that, put it on 10. And then I'm going to do a quick exchange and I'm going to move 10 to 13. And now 13 has moved to 10, 10 has moved to 13. So let's hear what the resampled version sounds like with both of them layered. I could have used pad link for this, but I just prefer to have it on one pad. So that's the original. And that's the layered one. It sounds a lot more meaty. I really like doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those two actually. So we've got those free pads. Okay, just trying to get some ideas. I think there's probably quite a lot of combinations that I could do with these because they sort of all roll into each other quite nicely. I haven't done any work on the effects yet, so don't worry about the sound too much at the moment. I think pad three sounds like a really strong starting pad. Okay, and something like that I think sounds pretty good actually. So let me do a tap tempo on that. Okay. 
Okay, and that looked like it was 76. So I'm going to go into I, uh, delete this pattern. I always seem to have patterns in there <laughs> before I start making patterns. Uh, record, and we'll change this to 76. And let's do a four bar loop. God, this is so annoying always having to try and get to four bars. There we go. Uh, strength 100, grid 16. That sounds good. I always tend to quantize quite heavily for my chops. So let's go ahead and give this one a go. kind of didn't like that. It's, there's not enough going on. I think it can be a bit more creative than that. And again, this was raised in the comments the other day by someone, but it's so annoying that you have to change it to four every time. I wish you could choose a default uh, for the length of bars that you want on a pattern. Yeah, that sounds really good. I like that. That had a little bit more going on and it, yeah, it's just a bit more interesting. So I'll copy that and now we can start layering some drums. And now we can do the snare and the kick. We'll turn this quantizing grid off and let's give this a go now. So now we can go in and add some effects. So let's make sure that uh, bus one and two are separate. So I've got my samples on bus one, my drums on bus two, and the way we want it set up is type B so that they're independent. And I'm really, really trying not to use uh, Crusher on this one because I've been using Crusher a lot. So I'm gonna use 404 Vinyl Sim. That's sounding kind of nice, and I do tend to just use Isolator on the drums, to be fair. So let's get a bit more bass on there. The mids can stay around about the middle and reduce those highs just a little bit, uh, just to take the edge off them, and let's see what that sounds like now. Okay, and bus three and four I'm gonna put on now, and let's see what I've got on there. I've got 303 Vinyl Sim, basically just doing compression, and reverb. I'm really enjoying adding reverb to beats at the moment. So with those two effects on as well, let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, that's pretty nice. I just need to add some sub now, really, because there isn't a lot of low end in this at all. I don't think there's any, actually, from that sample. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. Um, I could just stick with that one note. I've done that quite a lot in my beats just to add a bit of depth, but we'll try chromatic mode, see if we can come up with something for that. OK, 
Okay, and that's the main loop done, I would say. They'll probably go away and make some variations, which I'll do now and then do a final version at the end. But one thing that I do find with the pattern sequencer is I do find it quite difficult to get a nice flow. I always feel that the beats are a little bit kind of chunky and don't really gel that well but that's probably down to me personally i just need to keep working at it and keep practicing uh, so yeah that's the main loop i'll go ahead now do some more tweaks and then do a full performance of the live beat and i'm hoping that by the end of this series when i've got four tracks i will actually release these as a kind of mini ep on spotify etc um, i'll do some mastering i'll sort them out properly and make them into full beats and then do a release, so that's quite exciting. So yeah, thanks for joining me on this part of the video. I'll go away now, do some more work, and then you'll see a full performance at the end.